In this video, we'll go over a full data analysis project, and this will cover the three essential parts, which are data cleaning, data analysis, and data visualization. This has taken me years to learn, and you'd be surprised how many advanced Excel users don't know some of these key things we're about to learn. To make this as realistic as possible, we'll be using a real dataset on the richest people in the world, which you can download for free in the description below. The first step for us is data cleaning, and as you can see over here, we have the list of the people, so this rich list, alongside where they're from, their city, how they made their money, their total worth and some information about when they're born and the country that they're in. Before we do any of the data cleaning, it's very important that we save a copy. So for this, we can just go to the tab and while pressing the control key, just drag to the side. So now we have to, let's call this one, say the backup. And we'll just leave that over to the side. This way, if we end up deleting any rows by mistake, for example, we can always go back to them. So we'll be working on this data tab. Before we work on things like formatting, we first need to see if we have any duplicates. And for this, we would just go over to the data tab and then click on this button right here, which is the remove duplicates button. So we'll click on that and just click on OK. So it's saying we had six duplicates that have been found and removed. We'll click on OK there. So that's the first part done. And then we can work on some of the text here. For example, for the gender, maybe for data visualization later, would be nice to have male instead of just an M and female instead of just an F. So for this, we'll just select this whole area by pressing Control Shift down arrow, and then we'll go to Control H. This is the Find and Replace tool. You can also find it by going to Home and then clicking on Find or Replace over here. So what do we want? Well, first we want to replace the M with a male. We'll click on Replace All there click on OK, and we want to do the same thing with the F for female. Replace all again, and click on OK, and close out of that. Let's go all the way back up with Control up arrow, and then we have all of the birth information over here. So we have their birth year, birth month, and birthday, but there's actually nothing to do with their actual age. So it would be nice to create a new column for their age. Let's go ahead and add it over here for the time being. For this, we'll first need to aggregate the birth date, so all of this together. We'll do that with the date function. So equals date, we want their year, comma, then the month, comma, and the day, and hit enter. Great, so that gives us their full birthday, and now we can just take this all the way down to the bottom. Alongside this, we'll need the current date, so the date today, and we can do the today function for that. So we'll just type today in there, close a parenthesis, and hit enter. And again, I'm just gonna drag that down. With these two, we can then find the difference, but we don't just want the day difference, right? We want it in years. And for this, we need to use the year frac formula. And this is gonna give us both. So the start date is when they were born, comma, and the end date is the date today, and comma. And for this basis, we want the actual over actual. We'll put a one in there, close a parenthesis, and hit enter. And now double click over here to drag this down. So now we have their actual age. Let's change the titles over here. So this one's the age, this is their birth date, and then this one over here is date, current date, and hit enter. I'm just going to move this age column all the way to the middle here as it's a bit more relevant. And I'm gonna do that by pressing the shift key and then just dragging that to the side like so. And we have the age over here. Finally, let's take a look at number formats. So over here, you might have noticed we have the country GDP, but as soon as we actually look inside of the number, you'll realize that this is in text. It's not actually in number format. And we can test this just by going to, let's say, equals, selecting this one plus this one. We should obviously get a value there, but instead we just get a value error. I think the reason for this is because we have these commas and also because we have this dollar sign up front. So we could get rid of those by selecting them. So control shift down arrow and again, control H. And we're looking for first a comma and we want to replace it with nothing. We'll click on replace all there. Click on OK. And same thing goes with the dollar sign. So we have a dollar sign that we don't want. So we'll leave empty and click on replace all. OK. And close out of that. 
Now, if we stretch this out, it's looking a lot better, but we need to change the currency here. Let's just go over to more number formats. And I'm just going to make it a regular number. So this one right here with separators and no need for decimals and click on OK. Now you can see we actually get an answer if we sum one with the other. So that's looking better. Awesome. That's the data cleaning phase done. And next up we have data analysis. But first, if you're finding this slightly too fast or slightly too challenging for you, I'd recommend you check out our Excel for business and finance course. In this course, we'll go over all of the essentials you need to know, ranging from formatting best practices and shortcuts, to building awesome visual dashboards, creating large dynamic financial models, and much more. This is basically the course I wish I had before I started working in Excel-heavy corporate jobs. If all of that sounds interesting, check out the link in the description below. And if you want more than just Excel, we also have a ton of other courses including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. In this next data analysis phase, I always find it most useful to start with the basic statistics. So finding out things like the average, the count, min and max, etc. And for this, we can go over to the side and create a large list of formulas, like equals average, equals max, and so forth. But actually, there's a better way, which is by going over to data and clicking on data analysis. Here, you should get a pop-up like this one, and we wanna go for descriptive statistics. We'll click OK on that. And now, as our input range, we wanna select all of the values we want analyzed. So it's gonna be all the way from the final word right here to, let's see, shift right arrow to go to the side, all the way to the age, and control shift down all the way to the bottom. Hit enter there, and we want the labels in first row, ticked, and the output, we can just have it in a new worksheet. We want the summary statistics, so we'll tick on that and click on OK. This generates a sheet too, as you can see, and within it, we have all of the information. So for example, for the final worth column, which is basically their net worth, you can see that we have the mean, which I think is 14.8 billion because the numbers are in millions here. We also have a maximum of 211 billion and a minimum of 5.3 billion. There's also a total count of 475 people on this rich list, and we get all of that information for each of the columns. Like for example, here we can see the average age is 68. That's a basic analysis done, which should give you a better idea of the data you're working with. And next up, we would have the slightly more advanced analysis, which we can do with pivot tables. For these, let's head over to the data tab again, and this time we're gonna go just select anywhere inside of it and insert pivot table. We're happy to have that in a new worksheet and just click on OK. So over here in the middle, I have all of the pivot table fields and within it, suppose we want to find out who are the 10 richest. So the top 10, in this case, it's going to be the person's name, right? So whoever is the richest and we also want that to be by their final worth and just click on that. So we should have one under values and the other under rows. You can see right now it's just in alphabetical order. So to change this, we can go over to this drop down and click on value filters, top 10. So you'll see this area right here and we want the top 10 items by their sum of net worth, right? So who are the richest basically? We'll click on OK and we get this full list. But upon looking at it closely, it's actually not in any particular order. So let's switch this by right clicking and going to sort largest to smallest. Now we have this Bernard Arnault family as number one, followed by Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos. Another interesting analysis would be finding out the count of billionaires by age. So maybe the older they are, the more likely to become a billionaire. So let's take a look by selecting this whole pivot table by pressing Ctrl A there, Ctrl C to copy, and we'll just control B, so paste it down below here as a duplicate. To get rid of these two areas, just go ahead and drag them out like so. And now what we want is the billionaire count. So we can just take their age, which should be over here, you can see on the bottom, and just put it under rows. And we'll also put the same age under values, but not as a sum. We'll click on this drop down, go to value field settings, and we want it as a count. 
the sum of age doesn't make too much sense. So you can see here that at this age, we have one person. At 33, we have another one. But it makes more sense if these are grouped, right? Maybe it's people 30 to 40, 40 to 50, etc. We can also do this by right clicking and clicking on group. Within it, we're going to go start at 30 years old, let's say, and end at 100 years old. The increments, let's say we're happy at 10, so every 10 years, and click on OK. Now we can see grouped much better, and it looks like those that are 60 to 80 years old are the ones that are most likely to be billionaires. That said, there are 8 that are in their 30 to 40 range, and we can find out by just double clicking there, and you'll see we get the full breakdown in a new sheet of exactly who these people are. And at 34th, we have this person called Mark Mattershitz. In fact, when we look at this closer, this person is associated with Red Bull. These are just a few interesting examples, but by using descriptive statistics and pivot tables, you should be able to analyze pretty much any data set. Finally, we have the data visualization phase. And over here, we have the same pivot tables as before. Let's close this for now. The thing is, they're currently not dynamic. For example, it would be nice to see what about the net worth of the top 10 in a specific industry. Well, for this, we can head over to Pivot Table Analyze and click on Insert Slicer. These slicers are basically filters, so we can filter by the category, which is actually the same thing as the industry. We can also filter by whether they're self-made or not, and let's suppose their gender as well. We'll take on those three and just go to OK. Let me quickly rearrange these. And now we can just click on, for example, those in the automotive industry, and you'll see that we now get Elon Musk as number one, probably to do with Tesla and all these other people. Same thing if we filter this to true, so only those that are self-made. Now the list gets updated, and it seems like there's actually no female here. If I change this to false, then there seems to be a few females, in this case, this Suzanne Clatten person. If you want to filter out of these, just press on this X sign and X again. But you'll notice that this table down below isn't changing, even though we're changing all of the values here. And the reason is because it's not linked. So if we want to link this filter to both tables to avoid confusion, just go to right click and go to report connections. Here, we just want to make sure both pivot tables are ticked and click on OK. Same thing with these two other ones. So let me fast forward that. Awesome. Let me filter out of this one. And now we can create a few different charts. So we have this data right here. Let's go to control A to select it all and insert under recommended charts. I can choose, let's say the cluster column and click on OK. Let me rearrange this a bit. And so we get the top 10. If you don't want these tags, you can just click on field buttons there to undo them. And it looks like Bernard Arnault and Elon Musk are well above everyone else in this billionaire's list. Let's do the same thing with this other table. Just gonna go over to insert, recommend the charts, and I'll select a cluster again. Let me fast forward this. Here you can see that it follows a normal bell curve, where from 50 to 90 is the large majority of billionaires. Once we make all of the visuals we want, the next step is to put them into a separate dashboard tab or we can make it all dynamic. I won't cover that in this video because I've already made similar ones in this video over here where you can make your own interactive dashboard or you can learn that even better in our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.